Seven Citizens Black here from Casa Black Gaming, where I get right to the point with all of my guides so you can get back out into the verse. Today I wanted to offer up a quick loadout for the Anvil Carrick, which is one of the larger ships out in the verse you can currently own and use. My honest review will be following within the next day or so, so be on the lookout for that. Now as usual, I ask that if you like what I do and think I deserve it, that you subscribe, like, and comment to help me overcome the tyrannical evil YouTube algorithm. And so with the brief housekeeping out of the way, let's get to the loadout. Now as usual, I begin with the ship components first as these are the most costly and usually the most spread out around the verse. So for the shields, I recommend the FR-86s, which you can pick up at Dumper's Depot on Area 18, or Cousin Crows, but Cousin Crows is the best way to go here because you'll be heading there for all of the components. Now, while at the moment, most ship components in the same grade are pretty standard across the board, the FR-86 shields do have more health. And while the train of thought here is that you would only need this if you're big into PvP, I honestly recommend the shield anyway because you never know when you might come under fire as I did here while at a mining outpost collecting footage of the Pisces landing in the hangar and this Carrick was not upgraded yet so it did not take long to be killed. So yeah, upgrade the shields whether you're doing PvP or not because attackers won't always allow you to decide when you'll be PvPing. Now moving on to the power plant, I went with the JS500 which is the best size 3 power plant you can own for this ship and you can find these also at Cousin Crows as I mentioned earlier. Now for the Quantum Drive, you're going to want the TS2, which is also found on, wait for it, Cousin Crows, making this the easiest ship loadout as far as having to travel around to find the components. This Quantum Drive is a must and will cut your times traveling by more than half. I mean, 16 minutes from Microtech to Arc Corp with the standard engine is almost enough time to be logged out for inactivity, so definitely save yourself some time by upgrading this engine ASAP. Now as for the coolers, don't even waste your money on these as they are completely worthless and not even worth considering, especially with another wiper on the corner. Maybe sometime in 2023 we will get a ship component revamp where they give us back options, but until then don't waste the credits. Now speaking of credits, the total for all of these ship components is going to set you back a hefty 506,250 credits, which is a king's ransom for a fresh server or a new player, so be ready for that upfront cost. Alright, so now let's move on to the weapons, and this is going to be the shortest weapon section ever because the ship comes equipped with laser repeaters in the turrets already, and that's what you need to keep there. None of the turrets can be swapped for anything different, so the sizes and options are not there to be messed with. There are also no missiles to contend with, so again, this section is short and sweet, which means that's going to do it for this loadout of the Anvil Carrick. Now, I hope you found it useful and that I made it easy to find all of the ship components in that one-stop shopping location. Let me know if you're using the Carrick as a daily driver and how many crew you're rolling with when doing so as this vessel really shines with crew. Anyway, remember to be kind to your fellow gamer. Use the time you're escaping Crusaders at mode to make new life goals because believe me, you'll have the time and stay positive citizens.